Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode two of Roblox Studio Basics. Hopefully you're having a great day. Before we get into it, I just wanted to say that I do have a Patreon, and if you guys do enjoy this video or it does help you guys out and you guys want to support me, please go down below in the description and check it out. Additionally, if this video does help you guys out and you guys do enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button and hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see more Roblox development videos. Additionally, I have a Discord which you guys can join to ask questions and help other people or get help yourself. Link down below in the description and let's get into it. So, firing Roblox Studio once again, you should be met with a screen like this as you can see instead of being on the new tab this time we're actually on the my games tab remember how we saved and published the game from last time called my first game well we can click on that and it'll actually load it up for us for exactly where we saved that now this time we're actually gonna be talking about the toolbox which is on the left if you guys don't actually see the toolbox you can go to home and click on the toolbox icon right here and it should pop up for you you can also go to view and click on toolbox right here and it should also pop up for you as well now the toolbox has a couple of different things it has the marketplace where you can search for publicly made models, images, meshes, audio, everything that's uploaded to the Roblox marketplace. You can view it all on here. You can go to inventory where things have been added to your account, mostly through the website. You can go to recent for all the things that you've previously used. And then you can also go to creations as well, which I believe is what you have created yourself and published. So let's go back to marketplace and we can look right here. We can see all the different categories that we can actually search through. Additionally, we have the search bar and right next to that, we have three lines, which we can click on and this is actually for filtering you can type in a creator name right here such as monster to see all the creations that i've made specifically you can also sort it by the most taken the most favorited the most recently updated the most ratings or the most relevant which is related to your search now of course we're not going to search on my stuff but if we did we would click apply and there we go anyway what we're going to search for is we're just going to search for something simple like let's say a tree Okay, so we've got a tree house, we've got trees. Oh, I actually really like that pink tree. So we're gonna go ahead and double click on this and we can see it's been inserted directly into our game and it's also been inserted directly into our workspace. Now, before you do anything, be careful. Public models can be very dangerous and they can actually infect your game with a virus. No, they cannot infect your computer with a virus. They can infect your game and actually ruin it. Now, an easy way to check if your game can sort of be ruined by this model is by going to the filter workspace and typing out the word script and the reason for that is because it will bring up all of the possible scripts which are in anywhere in your project so if i had scripts anywhere else it would bring it up as you can see it brings up a couple of other things as well such as server script service because that has the word script in it it also brings up starter player but it also brings up starter character scripts and starter player scripts because they all have the word script in it so as we can see this model has a script in it let's go ahead and double click that and we can review it ourselves now if you're a competent scripter and you understand how scripts work and everything you could look at this and see for yourself if this script is safe what it does and everything like that i think this actually handles stuff with animations and sort of swinging on the swing set considered it's called swing script it doesn't seem like it does anything too dangerous, but one, I don't care for the actual swing script itself. I don't care about the swing set. I just want the model. And also I don't exactly trust it. I don't trust public models and their scripts because there can always be something in it unless you completely read through it and understand it. It's just best to delete it. So there we go. We're just gonna delete it. And now this has no more scripts inside of it and we're completely good to go. So let's go ahead and click on this object again. And if we want to, we can go over to here and we can move it. Also, there are hot keys for moving if you hold in the control key and then hit one that is select if you hit control key and two that is move control three that is scale control four that is rotate so you don't always have to go back to the model tab of course you'll get used to this over time but i figured i would just let you guys know the hotkeys now we're going to go ahead and go to move and move this around a little bit let's go ahead and center this onto the floor that we have right here we can see our spawn is in the way so we'll move that over a little bit let's move this down so it's touching that and there we go now let's go ahead and start our game Game. Once we get into the game, we can see we have this exact model that we were looking at right here. And oh wow, you can actually sit on these swings. Let's go ahead and exit the game once again. And let's get a little bit more advanced with this. And let's kind of start doing some stuff. Let's make a mini obby. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to workspace and we're just going to go ahead and insert a part. Now we're just going to name this part jump. So let's play around with this a little bit, select it, move it over and then resize it so that it is larger and we can actually jump onto it. That's a really large jump but hey this is not meant to be hard this is meant to be a very easy obby now what i would recommend doing is going to workspace creating a folder and naming these 
obby jumps or something similar to that and then we can drag our jump directly into there this is a good way to keep your project organized so now let's go ahead and make this a different color let's go ahead and just say we want this to be cyan also make sure that you have anchored on because we of course are not going to want this to fall we are going to want to make it anchored and then we can actually duplicate this by either right clicking on it and clicking duplicate or by just doing Control d and then it'll make a brand new one so let's go ahead and play around with this move this over a little bit okay now we have two jumps so now we can actually highlight both of these by holding Control down and clicking on both of them or you can click the top one hold shift down and then click the bottom one and then we can once again duplicate them and now it'll insert two more so we can drag these over drag these down a little bit and there we go we're getting some jumps going so once again click the top jump hold shift this time and click the very bottom one and now it'll automatically select all four of them and you can click Control d one more time move this over once again move it down move it maybe we want this a little bit lower for some reason okay there we go now let's go ahead and just test our game out and play it all right so as soon as we get into this we can see we have jumps and unfortunately we made our jumps a little bit too spaced apart that's okay though i'll actually show you guys something you can do so we could edit these by clicking on this part and moving it over a little bit but let's not do that let's undo the move and let's actually go to file at the top left go over to game settings and now a new screen will pop up for us go ahead go scroll down the list and go to world now we can actually change the jump power right here and let's go ahead and set this to 100 that would effectively double our jump power so make us jump two times as high as we normally do now let's go back over to here and try to complete it again and wow look how high we jump we jump so much higher so now we can definitely complete the parkour very very easily Sweet, we've made it all the way to the other side, but that was really slow. Let's also increase our movement speed as well. So go back to file, go back to game settings, go back to world, and now we can see walk speed. Let's go ahead and increase that to 32, once again, doubling our speed, and let's play it again. Okay, so we're see, we can see we're moving a lot faster, we're jumping a lot higher, and now we're going to complete the parkour a lot quicker. All right, now let's expand our obby a little bit more. Let's go ahead and add in a new folder, and we're going to rename this to land zone it might be a little bit confusing but imagine in an obby you're gonna have a spawn and then after you do a couple of jumps you're gonna want to reach a new spawn point where you step on that pad and every time you die after the next obstacles you'll always respawn at that one position that's what we're going to call landing zones you can name it whatever you want spawn points or anything like that but i'd recommend making a folder because it really helps with organization so inside of landing zone click the plus icon and then we're going to want to search for part go ahead and click on that and now we can see our parts right there we can click f on it to make it highlighted or to go directly to it in our camera let's go ahead and make this much bigger okay massively expanded it very nice and now let's actually move it where we want it all right so let's look at all the angles and that looks not possible to make okay actually okay we've got to kind of look at it from a bunch of different angles so we can really see but okay there we go now that looks perfectly fine and it looks like somebody could actually reach it and it's bigger it looks like a decent spot so once again of course we need to anchor this so let's go ahead and anchor this and let's customize it a little bit let's go ahead and make this red so that we know that it's something a little bit special and we can also change the material of it as well to glass so that it looks slightly different than normal i actually like that look how reflective that is very cool okay so now inside of the landing zones i'm gonna go ahead and add two more folders i'm gonna go ahead and name this folder spawns and we'll go ahead and make another folder called floors you guys don't have to be this organized but i would recommend to try to stay as organized as you possibly can you also don't have to do the same exact thing as me you don't have to call them floors you can call them whatever you want to i'm just trying to show you guys examples of how to stay organized and maintain a larger project especially for when you have a ton of parts this is really going to help you out also let's make sure that we rename this to floor as well so we're keeping it organized all over the place okay so now we'll throw that inside of floors and now inside of spawns we're going to go ahead and search for spawn and here we go we found spawn location now once again i'm going to delete the decal because i really don't like it we will move it over a little bit and let's just go ahead and move it right there let's go ahead and throw on a different color such as blue and we can look for anchored but we should already know maybe you don't remember yet but it is already anchored so we don't actually have to worry about that now spawn location actually has a special property that if we scroll down we'll eventually see it and as you can see right here it's teams this is the category and it says allow team 
change on touch. You can actually search for this as well. So we're going to go ahead and search up team. And as we can see, allow team change on touch. This does exactly what it says. When you touch this part right here, it'll actually change your team. So let's go ahead and click that. And then we're going to change the team color to whatever we want. And maybe we want to stay organized and set it to the same color as what it actually is. So the color of the part is dark blue. So we'll go ahead and set the team color to dark blue as well. Now let's go ahead and play our game and test this out real quick. So we spawn in. Oh, I keep getting stuck by this swing. And let's go ahead and make it to the other side real fast. Okay, so here we go. We make it to the other side. We step on this. Now, let's go ahead and die and see where we respawn at. Okay, now we just spawn right here. That's perfect. So now, since we made it across these obstacles right here, we don't have to worry about if we die in future obstacles spawning all the way back at the very start of it. I actually forgot to mention one thing. You're going to want to go into the landing zones, spawns, and spawn location, and you're going to want to scroll all the way down until you see teams. You can also search this up as well, but the neutral option right here actually has to be unselected. The reason for this is because if you set it to neutral, that means that anybody can spawn on it at any time. So if we look at the original spawn point, the first spawn point that we actually have this is a neutral spawn point meaning anybody can spawn on this and this basically sets the default spawn point for when players first join the game so i would only recommend having one neutral spawn if you're making an obby and that would be your first spawn point every spawn point after that should have allow team change on touch they should all have different team colors from each other and then also the neutral should be disabled for those spawns as well we'll always spawn after those obstacles because we are now at this spawn location okay so the tutorial is already getting a little bit long we're gonna end it there and on the next episode we're actually going to get into the very basics of scripting if this video did help you guys out make sure you smash the like button if you guys are new around here you guys want to see some more roblox development videos make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on additionally if you have any questions you guys can leave in the comment section down below also please give me feedback on how i can improve with making these tutorials guides and videos join my discord link down below in the description and also check out the patreon if you guys want to support me as well anyway i hope that you guys have a great day and i'll see you guys in the next episode